Hey everybody, it's Pastor Nat with Your Power 5. Have you ever shown up to an event where you were supposed to be on the guest list but your name was not found? I have. It's embarrassing, it's frustrating, and it's something you never want to experience, especially when you want to get into the party, to the event. But what happens on the day that you die and God is there and you say to him, God, let me into heaven. And he looks at the list and he says, your name's not on it. Could that be a reality? Well, listen to what Jesus says about entering the kingdom in Matthew chapter 7. He says, enter through the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who go through it. How narrow is the gate and difficult the road that leads to life and few find it. And then he says this in verse 21 of Matthew 7. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, drive out demons in your name, and do many miracles in your name? Then I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. Those are frightening words from Jesus. Jesus said, then I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Today, there are many people who think that they're saved, but they're not. They raised their hand at an, at an event. They prayed some prayer. Maybe they went to a youth camp. Maybe they've attended church their whole life. Maybe they've given away a lot of money. They've done things that they think qualify them for salvation. But Jesus makes it very clear. Narrow is the gate and few will enter it. There are people who will identify as a Christian. But the problem is, they've never truly understood what salvation is. So what exactly can a person do to be saved then? Because no one wants to show up to heaven and ask God, am I on the guest list? And he looks and he says, I don't see your name. So what must a person do to be saved? Ephesians 2 tells us, we are born spiritually dead. You may remember the movie, The Princess Bride, and Wesley, the hero, he's brought to Billy Crystal, and Billy Crystal says, ah, he's not dead, he's mostly dead, which means he's a little bit alive. Many of us think of our salvation that way, our spiritual status before God. Well, we're mostly dead, but we're actually totally dead. That's what Ephesians 2 tells us. We are totally spiritually dead. We're spiritual corpses. We're drowning with no hope of coming up because we're dead. But then it says in verse 4, but God. But God being rich in mercy, he makes us alive with Christ. He reaches down into the water. He grabs us by the hand, drags us to shore, and he says, live. Then in verses 8 through 10, it says, for by grace, a gift. For by grace you've been saved through faith, not of yourself so that no one may boast. In other words, God saves us purely as a gift, but we have to receive that gift. We have to say yes to Jesus, say no to ourselves, repent, turn from our sins, and turn to Jesus. He says, not of yourself. In other words, your religion won't save you, your good works won't save you. You're not 51% good and 49% bad, so God lets you win. Totally spiritually dead, God saves us by grace, a gift. And then in verse 10, it says, we become God's masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus for good works. We are saved by grace, a gift. Turn from your sin, turn to Jesus in faith, trust that that is the only way to God is through Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. He came, he died, he rose again for your sins, and that results in a soul saved and a life changed. If you want to be on that guest list, don't get the question wrong. Believe, repent, and turn to Jesus.